Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about a theorem in geometry known as the angle-angle similarity theorem. So this theorem has to do with two triangles where two of the angles of the two triangles are congruent to each other. So it says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. So remember about similar shapes, right? They have the, this, it's the same shape, but it's just a different size, okay? So there's been some kind of similarity transformation that has taken place. The similarity transformation, we call it dilation, which, which makes a shape smaller or bigger. So if we take our triangle ABC right here and we're to slide it or translate it over here, then notice we can map vertice C on top of vertice F, okay? So that gives us that angle C and angle F are congruent. So we also have the markings where angle B and angle E are congruent. So we know that the third angle of each of those triangles would also be congruent because the three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So since the all three angles are congruent to each other, we know that these shapes are similar. So there was some kind of dilation by a scale factor that has taken one shape and made it the size of the other shape. Okay, so let's use this theorem to solve a couple problems. So example one says just, are the two triangles similar? So the key is we're looking for the three angles of the triangle to be congruent. So we know that angle B and angle E have this 90 degree or this right angle box here. So we know those are 90 degree angles. So essentially we're trying to see what is the missing angle that we have here. So if we look at triangle ABC, we could say 90 plus 26, and that gives us 116. And we know that all three angles should add up to 180 degrees. So we, to find angle C, we could subtract 180 minus 116, and that gives us 64 degrees. So we know this angle is 64 degrees. Okay, so right now we know that angle B is congruent to angle E, and let's figure out angle D. So once again, we could do 90 and 64, and we do this and we get 154. We can do 180 minus 154, and we get 26. Okay, so now we can see that angle C was 64 degrees, which is congruent to angle F, and angle A was 26 degrees, which is congruent to angle D. So since all three of the angles are congruent to each other, we can say yes, these two triangles are similar. So we can write a similarity statement. We can say triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay, let's look at another one says show that the two triangles are similar. So triangle AED, which would be like triangle number one, and triangle CEB, so triangle number two. So we have these, also we have these parallel um, tick marks or parallel arrows that show us that segment BC is parallel to segment AD. So since that's the case, we can use a couple of those parallel lines cut by a transversal angle relationships that we've learned in the previous video and also another angle relationship here in the middle, right? Whenever we have this, this X figure, we know that these two angles are congruent because they are vertical angles. So now we can just pick two other angles that could be congruent to each other because of these parallel lines, and that would be angle C and angle A, because angle C and angle A, so angle C is congruent to angle A, because they are alternate interior angles, and we know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So then we could say angle BEC, BEC is congruent to angle AED because those are vertical angles. And so now since we have two angles of one triangle that are congruent to two angles of another triangle, we can say triangle AED is similar to triangle CEB by the angle angle similarity theorem. So we were able to prove that those two triangles were in fact similar. Okay, so that's the angle-angle similarity theorem.